Hello, my name is Matthew Pete, and today I'm going to be talking about extensions we've made over the past year to the Pi framework for modeling, control, analysis, and simulation of PDEs of the form defined by the hydrogel actuators developed by my colleagues. So last year we proposed or we gave the following model here, which is defined by a PDE with a second order spatial derivative. Uh, reaction terms here and transport terms here, coupled with an ODE. So the disturbances and the control effort enter through the ODE, which then are passed to the PDE, and then the output of the PDE is passed back to the ODE. This is just the framework we used. The boundary conditions were of the form here, where it's defined by matrix B. So this is a relatively universal framework for defining boundary conditions and optimal control problems. And today I'm going to be going through extensions to this framework. So the PI framework, partial integral equation framework for modeling these systems, is an alternative representation to the PDEs, which are defined by spatial derivatives. And it's defined critically by nine operators uh, here, these nine parameters you see here, the two extra parameters, uh, three extra parameters over here. And critically, these Parameters are all bounded linear operators, and most importantly, they form an algebra. And why is an algebra important? Because linear algebra is what we do in computation, matrix manipulation. So if our parameters, the things we're optimizing and manipulating, aren't, uh, don't lie in an algebra, we basically can't use matrices to deal with them. So we're going to ignore the, uh, the finite dimensional parts of this and ignore the 4 pi part and just focus on the operators in the spatial dimension, which are combined uh, multiplier and two kernels. So there's three parameters in the classic pi algebra. So the advantage, of course, of using an algebra is that we're able to replicate most of the stuff we did for state space of ODEs and LMIs to PDEs. So specifically, we were able to extend stability, uh, analysis, estimation, and optimal control problems to these pi representations uh, using the previous work. So you saw this most of this slide last year. Uh, the extension this year, however, is that we're now able to handle the case of where we have inputs at the boundary. So uh, boundary control problems, which is something we didn't cover last year. So that's our first extension. Second extension is a little more abstract. We can handle now uh, more complicated boundary conditions. So for example, if we have a disturbance at the boundary or there's a boundary condition which depends on the integral of the state, such as you would have in optimal controls or using a DC motor with distributed delay. Uh, also, we can handle higher order spatial derivatives, which is important if you want to say, control uh, the Timoshenko beam equation, which is a good model for a distributed actuator. It has a fourth order spatial derivative in there. Uh, the next extension that we considered is simulation tools. So we've developed now a integrated package for simulation, which is included in Pi tools and is in fully integrated into the software package. It's relatively simple to use. You use your PD model, which is inputted using Pi tools. Uh, some options including the integrator and the initial conditions and the disturbance and so forth. And it outputs a solution which then you can sim you can plot, basically. So just to illustrate this work through, right, the Pi tools allows you to declare your model, define the optimal controller, and then simulate it all in sort of a unified framework. So for example, here's a time delay system we use. Here's the input, here's the disturbance, here's our regulated output. And we divine, find an H infinity optimal controller for this system. And then we can just plug that directly into PySim and get the uh, closed loop simulation response and the open loop response. Uh, the next extension is to two spatial dimensions. So this is the case where you may into, you want, want to couple your actuator with fluid flow, for example. Uh, in this case, however, we have to extend our algebra. Remember, algebra is the heart of everything we do here. And the simplest extension to two dimensions, which includes the algebra for 1D, is, requires nine parameters, basically. Uh, eight kernels, which are these things right here, and one multiplier. And so this is actually the simplest we can do uh, while still maintaining the algebraic structure of our operator. So now we have nine parameters. But this allows us to do things like analyze uh, reaction diffusion equation 
here's our uh, diffusion terms, here's our reaction term, and here's our input. And we're gonna do L2 gain analysis, for example, in this case. Uh, here are our boundary conditions. Notice our functions, right, of these spatial variables, and that makes life a little bit more complicated as well. Here we've plotted the L2 gain of this system as a function of the reaction term. As the reaction term increases, the L2 gain increases, and compared it to a discretization-based result. Uh, so we can see it tracks very nicely with that. However, by increasing the complexity of the algebra, of course, we've increased the complexity of the computational problem. And so from that standpoint, we now turn to improvements to our parser. Basically, this was the bottleneck we were having uh, in that for classical control problems, which you might want to use, say, SOS tools for, and PyTools, I should mention, is built upon SOS tools. So all the polynomial manipulations that go on uses the SOS tools uh, polynomial manipulation toolboxes. So that started out as SIMS, which is integrated into MATLAB, uh, updated in 3.0 to PVAR, uh, and now we've included a new data structure which allows us to efficiently exploit the structure of the decision variables and reduce the parsing times. So for example, on these uh, classical SOS problems, we can see that for even reasonably sized problems, uh, these old implementations, 99% of the time is spent parsing and very little is spent actually solving the problem you want to solve, the LMI. Uh, by introducing this new data structure, however, we're able to reduce that time from 99% to uniformly less than 10%, and in most cases, less than, in large-scale problems, less than 0.09% of the time is spent parsing versus solving the optimization problem. This is now implemented in SOS Tools 4.0. So to conclude, uh, we have here a one-stop shop, if you will, for modeling, analysis, control, and simulation. And all, this is very important because it allows you to declare your model and not switch between software programs uh, but in these various steps. For example, if you design and control and you want to implement it, that is actually a huge bottleneck when you're dealing with PDEs. And now it's in, it, there's a complete work through in, in PyTools. I should mention, however, that some of these extensions uh, are not currently implemented in 2021B, which was released in the end of December. Uh, only PySim and the SOS tools updates are implemented in that. Uh, the rest will be implemented sh shortly. Uh, the main problem we have is the user interface for declaring the models. So the GUI has to be updated, and be, there are a lot of terms, so it gets very complicated. We're working on a command line interface to make that a little bit easier. All of these things are robustly documented, I mean, by all of these things, these two things, in the PyTools manual and the SOS tools manual, and uh, can be found on the website. So now I'll turn it back over to my colleagues to finish the presentation. Thank you very much.